Okay, with that little background in lecture 12 of how uh, we are going to add elements and then create theorems where we can see the third element so that then we can add it to the group. And we're going to do this largely graphically without having to you know, go back and talk about uh, the mathematical equivalence of that being uh, with the group and everything. So just to remind you, um, you know, we had shown previously that if we had done a specific case of a twofold axis with a mirror um, line in 2D or a mirror plane in 3D, uh, that we would end up with an automatic third element, uh, which was another mirror plane. And again, that was induced by the presence of these other two elements creating that one. And of course, we showed with the identity metric matrix that you know any two of these would combine to give the other. I mean, that was part of the property of being a group. So, uh, with this set of operators, we're going to now go into um, the most generic case, trying to develop a um, a theorem, a combination theorem, where it says, hey, in any pattern, if I see a rotation plus some mirror planes or mirror planes without a rotation, you know, can I find where that third element's going to be without having to, again, um, think about anything else but uh, geometry. So remember with 2mm, we had done the case I just showed you under the page where we added this, we got this, we got sigma 1, and it induced uh, um, sigma 2, and this was unique, and so we ended up with 2mm. Now we want to derive the more general case uh, for this uh, so that we end up with the ability to kind of recognize uh, the superposition of two you know, operators and then uh, say, okay, that means that there's another element somewhere here. So let's start with uh, operating uh, about point A, which we'll call it. And let's imagine the case where we have two mirror planes. Now you say, well, why pick two mirror planes? Remember this case here, we have a, a rotation and two mirror planes, we showed that, that if I add any one of these, if I operate with any two of these guys, I get the other one, right? So let's just take the generic case, because in an image, uh, uh, looking at a symmetry, you'll see like two mirror planes. So let's imagine I have sigma 1 and sigma 2, which are fairly easy you know, to observe. I know I have mirror planes or mirror lines. Then, uh, what does that say? about the rotation in the most generic case. So let's look at a generic case. Let's take a decent sized object here, right? And what we're gonna do is say, okay, um, that comes from a starting shape, which we'll say is over here. Right, so starting shape would be number one, and it creates you know, shape two because I've operated on, on sigma one, right? So um, now let's take the second plane. say, okay, I'm going to reflect. And so now, remember that if this is, um, if we're going to call this, you know, left-handed, this becomes right-handed. But this one must become left-handed again when I, when I do the, the reflection, right? So it becomes... The fact that I've done two reflections brings back a left-handedness, right? So now we say, aha, what is going on at point A? Well, you can see now why two mirror planes result uh, in um, a rotation because uh, remember how two mirror planes ro uh, go into uh, a right-handedness, but then when you operate on the mirror plane again, 
of another mirror plane, it goes back. And so therefore, the two are likely to be related through some rotation uh, through A. So let's look at that. So if I change colors here, let's draw a line through A and through the original, oh sorry, whoops, through the second object and, and the original object. So everything operating about point A, let's call this angle alpha, right? which means that this angle is alpha, right? And let's call this angle then beta, which is a difference between these two overall guys and that one. So beta plus alpha equals the angle between the two planes, right? And let's call that then angle between the two planes, we'll call it mu, which is going to equal alpha plus beta, right? Just by definitions. <clears throat> now, um, if, I, if I look uh, over here at, and I draw a line through here, What I realized because of the mirror symmetry of sigma 2 is that this is also beta, of course, right? Because by definition, this distance must equal that distance, and so that's beta, right? And so now let's look at the original object. If I look at the original object from here, all the way over to here, right, and we count up the angles, we see that's 2 alpha plus 2 beta, right, well alpha plus beta is mu, so this by definition is 2 mu, right? So now we have all the components basically for the general theorem because we'll call this alpha uh, rotation, uh, if I relate the first to the third, here's a third object. The first object's related to the third object now through a rotation of 2 mu. So if we indicate this by adding 2 mu to the base of that, then you can make the following thing, that um, if I have a general angle of mu between two mirror planes, it results in the equivalent operation of taking the original object and rotating it through two mu into a position three. Right, and so we're going to represent that as a new combination theorem shown here, where if I take uh, two mirror planes that are separated by mu, they result in the equivalent operation of the original object of a rotation of two mu, and it gives you the same thing, right? And so that's a generic version of, of this particular thing. Right?